Hello, everyone. I just now realized that I've run out of games that I could pretend this game is because I don't play any video games anymore except for Magic and Dark Souls. So, uh, let's just get right into it then. <laughs> um, you can probably tell from my voice, but, uh, I'm not recording at my desk today. I'm uh, I'm just kind of chilling on my couch, you know, kind of a really casual energy, kind of like you know we're we're drafting at the beach, you know, we're just we're just chilling out, having a good time. We're playing some Magic: The Gathering on the beach. Watch out, you're gonna get sand in those sleeves. All right, let's go. All right, okay. Well, Rankle is just amazing. Um, a four four. Or sorry, a four mana three three with haste and flying would be like totally fine. Um, but the fact that you have the ability to, you know, punish your opponent by either making them discard, lose life, uh, and draw, or sack a creature, depending on what, you know, what works uh, worst for them or best for you at that moment, is just like ridiculous. Um, it's insane. Uh, yeah. It's an amazing place to start. Uh, a total bomb. Okay. Uh, uh, looking at the cards in this pack, there's a few cards. So Inspiring Veteran, has got a good effect, but after picking Rankle, uh, I really want to see if we can hedge into a deck that plays black, and if we're playing red-white, uh, obviously that's not going to get played. Um, Sage of the Falls is good, uh, you know, it's a really good engine. Uh, you gotta be kinda careful with it, cause, you know, getting milled out is a big thing in this, uh, in this format. But, I mean, a 5 mana 2-5 handles, like, aggro extremely well. Um, Cauldron Familiar is okay. Uh, it does have, like, synergy with Rankle, um... Because, you know, if we, if we ended up in a food deck, for example, the fact that we could, you know, bring back uh, Cauldron Familiar to be our creature that we force a sacrifice with is actually not totally uh, crazy. And it might be enough that uh, uh, I might consider it here. Sage of the Falls is just such a higher power level, though, it's hard for me to say, you know, I should be taking this. Uh... Hmm. Already, kind of on a t tricky pick. Um, Trap of the Tower is also a fine, fine card, but I don't think I want to play it more than I want to play Sage of the Falls, if we're just looking at, like, the power level of cards. Especially, you know, if we can't use it to clear away for Wrangle. Huh. This might be wrong, but because uh, from the drafts I played with Eldraine, you get paid off for building synergistically, even at the expense of taking raw power, I'm going to try taking the Cauldron Familiar. I'm going to take the Cauldron Familiar here and see how that pays me off. Um, the Sage of the Fall is obviously much stronger. There are definitely stronger cards in this pack, but I think that we could really have some nice synergy with Rankle, and obviously the food deck is also a great deck in general to play. Uh, so we'll take it here, and we'll see what's what's coming down the pipe now. Okay, we got a few things. Um, so Scorching Dragonfire is probably the best card of the pack, and it's probably what we'll take. Um, like a red, a red black aggro deck is pretty good if you get a lot of like the good red black removal. Rankle is an amazing curve topper for for that sort of thing. You know, if you have an aggressive strategy and you have some, you know, weaker chump, chumpy creature or, or just sack creatures that you want to clear your opponent's board. And again, the fact that it's flying in haste is really strong. Uh, Rose Thorn Acolyte might be what I would take otherwise, um, as you know, the other deck on Arena that you see a fair bit is like a food deck, but I think I'm going to try taking Scorching Dragon Fire here and see where we go with this. The uncommons are pretty, pretty mediocre, not too interested with them. Um, so we'll take Scorching Dragon Fire here. 
Follow that up with the Searing Barrage. Rampart Smash is really good, but, uh, you know, we only have one red card, and, uh, that's not good enough to play the Rampart Smasher. Um, Searing Barrage is good, especially if we end up leaning more aggressive, uh, with this Rakdos deck that might be coming together. Uh, Clockwork Servant is quite good. Better if we're, um, like, uh, excuse me, better if we are decidedly one one more color than the other, uh, which happens a lot. I mean, almost every deck I've played um, has been, uh, like, 10-7 or 11-6. Uh, but I think we're going to take the Searing Barrage here. Um, all right, so we got a few cards here. Sorry, excuse me, I got a bit of a runny nose, and I... Don't want to keep sniffling into the mics. I'll be right back. Okay, we'll see how long that lasts. Okay, so we have a few cards that are good here. Um, Shepherd of the Flock is awesome. Um, and we have seen a little bit of white. But we also have, like, Merchant of the Veil, which is a great card. Uh, we have Forever Young, which I really like. Especially considering there's, you know, a disproportionate amount of mill in... Uh, in a uh, best of one, or I guess arena in general. Um, so, considering that, I think I'm going to take Forever Young over the Merchant of the Veil. But if we weren't playing, you know, on arena where the bots kind of undervalue Mill a little bit, I think it would actually be the reverse decision. But we're going to take Forever Young here. It's late Flutterfox. Man, the bots just hate Flutterfox. Um, hmm. Well, Rimrock Knight is a great aggressive card, uh, and it seems like we might be leaning that direction as of right now. You know, adding two damage to something for one, and then playing a 3-1 later. It's fine. This is a totally, totally decent playable. Oh, I have the sound on again. Well, at least I noticed. Hold on. Okay, so we have Joust, which is kind of a removal spell. Not ideal, especially considering we have, like, one knight, and that knight definitely doesn't survive that, that damage very often. Uh, well, considering we don't have a lot of knights, it's pretty late Rosethorn Acolyte. Also, I think, no, I guess pack, pick 9 is going to be when things wheel. Uh, I should have paid more attention to what was in that pack. There's just Rankle, so I kind of blocked everything else out. Um, I think we'll take the Rimrock Knight here again. Again, it kind of looks like we're a little more aggressive for for now. Uh, so nothing good in this pack. Really weak pack. I think we'll just take a Witch's Cottage. Maybe we don't even. We might not even play it. But all right. So not a ton wield again. Uh, maybe take Fling. I don't think it'll make the make the deck, but we'll slide it in there. Blood Haze Wolverine is probably the best card. The floor of a 2-1 uh, for 2 is not too terrible. Um, take that here. Skullknocker Ogre is not very impressive. Hmm. None of these cards are very impressive. All right, let's see what pack two has. I think we have an okay sort of aggressive deck sort of building right now. Uh, Sorcerer's Spyglass is not the sort of card you want. Scorching Dragonfire is, though. It's good removal. Um, just nice for our deck if we want to just keep pushing through damage. Uh, Spinning Wheel is pretty... Okay, it's a little slow. It's a fairly slow mana rock. Um, well, I guess three mana is kind of par for the course nowadays, I guess. Uh, paying five mana to tap a creature isn't bad. Uh, but I think the, just the efficiency of Scorching Dragonfire, considering, again, we want to be playing fairly aggressively, is kind of where we want to be. 
Uh, so I think the Scorching Dragonfire is better than the Spinning Wheel here. Um, yeah, let's see. Oh, Fairy Vandal, huh? Shoot. It's a good card. A strong payoff. Um, hmm. The real possibility is just is a decent card. Obviously, we don't really have payoffs for such a thing. Uh, Scalding Cauldron is a fine piece of removal. Claim the Firstborn is not uh, that exciting. I guess it has like kind of synergy with Fling, but it's not just like an act of treason, so we don't really get much out of... I mean, we'll steal something small, which could be good. I mean, if we're, you know, again, if they have one... Excuse me, one too many blockers, we can uh, kind of end the game like that. Also, it has synergies with Rankle. Um, hmm. Maybe I will take it here. It's kind of an interesting... Uh, it's an interesting choice. Uh, I guess this is kind of an experimentation pick. We have, like, we could put Fling in the deck, but Rankle gets played probably no matter what. Um, and it's kind of interesting with, with Rankle. I mean... Malevolent Noble's also good. Brimstone Trebuchet is not bad. I think it's good for, you know, helping finish off an enemy. We have two knights to untap it. Uh, Thrill of Possibility is nice. It draws you two cards, which I guess triggers Blood Haze Wolverine. Um, but other than that, don't have a ton of reason for it. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go with the Claim the Firstborn here. I'm going to get... We're going to take something a little ridiculous and see if it actually pays off for us at all. Okay. Well, Order of Midnight is really good. So is Revenge of Ravens. Um, Revenge of Ravens basically means we'll win any race. Uh, but considering it's best of one, it, it kind of does blank a little bit, and it's a little expensive for our deck's tastes. Order of Midnight is very good, uh, and a lot better for what our decks wants it to, you know, a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two in the air. We don't care if it can't block, because we'll probably be the aggressive deck in a lot of our matches, so I think it makes it a, uh, a better choice here than Revenge of Ravens. Charmed Sleep. Hmm. Ha, huh, man. I'm all... <laughs> I always just want to play blue. Um... Well, I think the pick here is Malevolent Noble, um, although I could probably go ahead and take a 3-drop in our deck. We have literally no 3-drops. Um, Raging Redcap is pretty good. I mean, yeah, I might take Raging Redcap considering we have no 3-drops yet. It synergizes well with, like, Rimrock Knight. It synergizes well with, currently that's it. Um, but, it, I mean, like, if we ended up picking, like, a Brimstone Trebuchet fairly late, it's just kind of untaps that, if that's, like, one of our ways to finish off a game. If we pick up, like, a really late, I don't know, something like a Witch's Skewer, no, excuse the, the, the black equipment that makes food, um, that makes this a little better. But I think with the rim, two Rimrock Knights and potentially more, um, I think we can get a lot out of Raging Red Cap. So, uh, we'll, we'll take it here, and we'll kind of think about that going forward. Yeah, so, oh, I was going to take a Rimrock Knight, but Reef Soul is probably better for us here. It's a really late Fierce Witch Dogger, wow. Uh, yeah, the Reef Soul is just strong. I mean, what you, you don't want in, like, uh, in an, against this, this, uh, an aggro deck is for them to slap something with a big butt that kind of slows your advances. And the fact that this targets based on power uh, can really help, you know, if they play something like a Misford River Turtle or if they play like a Sage of the Falls. Or something with a low power, low enough to kill our threats, but also tough enough to survive. The Rimrock Knight is good, uh, but I think I'll take the Reeve Soul over that, the third Rimrock Knight, especially because I'm pretty sure we can probably get a couple more in this draft. Uh, Reef Soul is a little bit less replaceable. Okay, well, 
Ogre Eric's pretty good, but we don't really have a knight's deck going on. We just have three knights, which are, I guess, four knights. Um, but this one, Evasion, doesn't really benefit this one as much. Uh, Thrill of Possibility helps protect us against Flood, and it just lets us keep drawing, you know, drawing to Rankle, you know. Um, I think it's probably the better pick here. It does have a little synergy with Blood Aisle over it, I guess, but uh, we'll see. Also, there is apparently like a sort of a blue-red, sorry, not a blue-red, a black-red draw two deck, because you can sometimes pick up some of those, you know, draw two payoffs for in red, and then there's cards like Forboding Fruit. Um, I guess even Forever Young would kind of do that as well, you know, like black has some stuff too. Uh, speaking on this pick, I'm probably going to take Forboding Fruit. I'm not sure if it'll make the cut. Uh, we don't need like a billion draw spells, although... It might not be the worst to have two, especially, you know, because in this best of one, digging to rankle might make or break a lot of our decks. And I'm not too keen on playing a second Forever Young, uh, necessarily. You know, with our deck right now, if we're playing against Mill, the hope will be that we just kind of, like, race them, and they can't really do it. They can't mill us fast enough. And then we just have one Forever Young as kind of a, uh, whatchamacallit, what am I trying to say? insurance against that. Uh, I think foreboding fruit is pretty good though, so I think we'll take that here. Not sure if we play it, but we will be taking it here. Uh, tr not too keen on any of these cards. Probably just take another Forever Young, although again, like I said, I don't think it makes the main deck Forever Young number two. Uh, yeah, Giant Skewer, that's what it is. I think I might take the Giant Skewer here. I don't know if it makes the deck again, but even if you're an aggressive strategy, or a more aggressive strategy, I have found, like, having one card that kind of is grindy can pay you off. I mean, you throw this on, like, a flyer, and that helps us close a game, like, a lot faster. Um, you know, it has some synergy with, like, Cauldron Familiar if things get... You know, if things do get a little bit grindy, that's kind of a little bit of a combo. Because if we're playing aggressive enough, blocking the creature equipped with Giant Skewer is going to be a necessity for our opponent. So we will generate food a lot. Um, and I think we'll play this, and it might actually make our deck. I've been pretty impressed by this card, honestly. It's not like a, a bomb rare that you have to take, or you're a fool. <laughs> but, you know, it's like, it's, it's impressed me. Wow, Black was really open to this pack, I guess. Hmm. Let me quickly check my creature count it, too. I got one, two, three, four. Four creatures. We have a lot of spells at four, or at two, but not a lot of creatures. That does kind of make me want to take a level of Noble. Something which wouldn't be terrible in our deck. We have, like, again, like I said, with our, for, with our uh, giant skewer, it's entirely possible that, like, you know, this could be decent reach. Uh, the second Thrill of Possibility might be better than playing a Thrill and a Foreboding Fruit, instead just playing the Thrill of Possibility. Hmm. Mobile Noble is pretty good. I think I'm going to take the Tempting Witch, because I have time still to get two drops, and, um... I can see this being a decent way to finish off an opponent with, in combination with like Giant Skewer if things are kind of leaning that direction in this more grindy format. Um, and I think Malevolent Noble is a card that we can probably get a little bit later, or like other two drops. So uh, I'll take this here. Uh, we are playing pretty aggressive. And again, we have like some little food synergies here and there, so I think Gingerbread's actually okay and might make our deck. In our deck, it's like definitely on the verge of being cuttable. But uh, Lash of Thorns, really weird that it gives you like plus one toughness and death touch. Also kind of sad that it doesn't replace your place yourself. Uh, take blow your house down. Put it in the board. All right. Witch Claw Talisman. No. Uh, I don't think Witch Claw Talisman is it. If I take it, it would be because I'm rare drafting it, and I'm not too keen on doing that uh, when there's a Scorching Dragonfire in the pack, and I could just take another, like, 
very good piece of removal. A lot of creatures in this format do have three toughness. Like, Scalding Cauldron has really impressed me in terms of, like, what it can do. Um, and, you know, that means that Dragonfire, Scorching Dragonfire, is going to be even better because it's cheaper and it exiles. Um, not even sure why it bothers, why it says target creature or planeswalker. This thing is never gonna, it's not gonna kill an Oko, it's not gonna kill a Garrick. Uh, kind of, kind of, and then Searing Barrage won't let you hit a planeswalker. It's just like, why is the text on the, 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 the targets on these should be swapped? It's kind of annoying. Uh, but I only say that because I hate planeswalkers and they should never have, they should don't, should not exist. Uh, but yeah, Scorching Dragonfire is the best card in this pack here, for us, specifically. Gully is pretty strong, but obviously we're not in those colors. Huh, another Scorching Dragonfire, or Bell of the Brawl. Again, not a lot of knights. We might have enough to pick up Joust now, but let's just kind of see here. We have one, two, three... Four. Just four. I don't think four is enough to really pick up a Joust or Bell of the Brawl. Um, do I want the fourth Scorching Dragonfire? See, the thing about our deck is that if it leans a little bit more aggressive, we might really be wanting more cards like Searing Barrage to clear big threats that we can't deal with. Um, or cards like Reeve Soul to kill creatures with big butts. Um, so the Force Scorching Dragonfire might not be as like impressive as the first one is for sure. Like it might not be a card that actually becomes like much better, especially in our deck in multiples. Whereas if we were a bit more controlling, which we do have controlling elements, this would be very good. But I think Merchant of the Veil. Um, might actually be a better pick here. Again, like, just, it's a good effect, and the fact that it sits there, and it can, you know, help us mitigate Flood, is pretty decent. Again, like, in Best of One, like, there'll be a lot of games where we're really just trying hard to dig to Rankle. Um, because getting Rankle will probably win us the game pretty, pretty handily. So I think with that in mind, we're actually going to take Merchant of the Veil over the fourth dragon fire. Um, well, there's the Searing Barrage, but there's also the Witches of it. We could just go infinite with Cauldron Familiar. Uh, <laughs> after I just, you know, I, I, hmm. I don't think that, um, Witch's Oven is good enough in our deck to, you know, it has synergy with Clave the First Four, and I guess. Yes. Um, but, like, I don't think that's just good enough, really. The Cauldron Familiar is good, but it's not, like, our main strategy. Like I said, it's something nice that we can use with Rankle, which probably warrants it to spawn our deck. We have a, a few, like, decent ways of making food, so that could keep that keeps in our deck, but I don't think we want to go full Witches Oven when a Searing Barrage is here that we can use to, like, lock down a game. I don't think that would be very, uh, very responsible of us. Other cards in the pack of note are Malevolent Noble again, for the same reason I said. We don't have a ton of two-drop creatures for our somewhat aggressive deck, which is a little bit worrisome. I mean, Swordmaster's not too bad. We have a few knights. Could be a a way to just kind of end the game with its own effect, uh, with its adventure. But I think Searing Barrage is good, and we'll definitely, we'll have a level, we'll go much later in the pack than, like, uh, Searing Barrage will. So, I think we'll pick that up here. Steel Claw Lance, amazing card. Um, even if we're not playing Knights, we have a couple Knights, so, like, that, that that's pretty good. And, you know, on a, if we are flooding out a little bit, like, giving a creature 2-2 is crazy. Like, Putting this on Raging Redcap, for example, is just amazing. Like a 3-4 with double strike, crazy. And you only pay 3 mana to cast and equip to the Raging Redcap. Like, that's insane. Uh, and, oh yeah, pretty easy keep uh, take for this. Uh, pretty happy to do that. Bognati. Uh, probably take the Bognati here. I mean, we have, a, again, we got a few ways of making food. Giant Skewer is a way to make food over and over again. 
forebo foreboding fruit, tempting witch. Um, like it's not a lot, but the fact that for giant skewer, for example, is recurrable means that I think this is actually good enough. Um, and again, like if the game doesn't go that long, like it's a flying creature as well, which can be nice. Um, but yeah, I think that's the pick here. Okay, got another resoul. I mean, if we don't have a ton of, you know, two drop creatures, but we have like all the two drop removal we could want, that's fine as well. Brimstone Chabasse is okay. It, I, it would be the pick if Reef Soul wasn't in the pack. Um, but yeah, Reef Soul, just great what, with what our deck wants to do. Okay, uh, probably Rimrock Knight here again. Um, it is a two drop creature, which I was just lamenting not having, and the effect is, you know, quite good in our deck. Probably better than Golden Egg. Um, though we did just pick up a Bognati. I think we want to stay the course with what our deck kind of wants to do. I mean, Bognati is excellent, but it, it also could get cut. Um, but just in case we see, like, you know, we got really late Golden Eggs here. If we see, like, another one, we can snap that up and maybe we still play the Bognati. But I think that Rimrock Knight will make the deck no matter what. The real possibility, as I said, might be better than the second Foreboding Fruit, especially if we want to cut this food package we have going on here. Um, so we'll take it, if in case that's what we want to do. Uh, another Tempting Witch, though I don't think we make it, unless we wanted to go heavier on the food package. Memory Theft probably doesn't make the deck, but... Alright. Keep. Howl's Moving Castle. Here it is. We're, of course, playing Howl's Moving Castle in our aggro deck. Paying 14 mana to attack. With a 7-7 Trample is exactly what my deck wants to be doing. Okay, so we currently have three cuts to make. We could, you know, like I said, we could cut that food package. Um, we cut the food package. We cut, like, a Ginger Brute. The Skewer probably stays. Um, and we cut Foreboding Fruit. And then maybe Tempting Witch. Keeps us really aggressive. which might be good enough to just kind of like swarm over decks that aren't expecting it. Hmm. Card quality is quite good is the thing. Well, I guess if we cut the food package, we also cut Bog Naughty. Bognot, mm, Bognotti is a good card, but I think I might cut it because, you know, it's not like something that your opponent doesn't see happening. And again, the negative three, negative three is, excuse me, good, but it's in the same sort of category as why we weren't taking like fourth and fifth Scorching Dragon Fires over equivalently or, or even a little bit less uh, powerful cards that we didn't have any copies of yet because the deck wants to like, you know, our deck will get stopped by, like, big creatures. You know, if we trade a Rimrock Knight with a creature with three toughness instead of, like, bognaughtying it, that doesn't feel that bad for us, right? Um, so we might cut... I'm not sure about cutting Ginger Brute. It might actually be okay in our deck. Again, like, we have... Because we might not cut Cauldron Familiar either way, so we could throw a... I mean, it can be good with, you know, Rimrog Knight, if we just want to spend our mana on something. It would be good with an Equip, which we have two of, you know. Um, it can be good with Tempting Witch, if we keep that. Let's cut the Bog Naughty for now, and then see where we go from there. we got to cut two cards. I also will cut a land because we have a very low curve with two two five drops, you know, with, with one four drop and two five drops being the uh, the car only cards in our deck higher than three mana. I don't feel too bad about uh, playing 16 lands here. I feel like that'll be the correct call. 
Oh, probably cut the second forever young, as I mentioned. Right, I forgot about that. Well, I mean, we're at 40 now. Um, is there anything else that we should play instead? Uh, I probably will cut the foreboding fruit for the second thrill of possibility. Again, cheaper card. Feel. We're pretty happy to pitch lands. I mean, especially if we're... Like, we need to get to five lands for the most part. We'll be pretty happy. <sighs> really, we just need to get to rank and we'll be happy. <laughs> I am going to keep Claim the Firstborn as kind of this dumb little uh, <laughs> package with... Or not package, but like the synergy with Rankle and our aggro sort of strategy. Um, I don't think that is a good enough reason to put Fling in the deck, for example, but I think this could be cute. Um, pretty happy with like all things in our two drop slot. We actually have a couple ways to like trigger Blood Haze Wolverine at instant speed for like, you know, cute tricks. Uh, got the two thrills. We got um, Immersion of the Veil. Like I think this could actually get activated a the, the fair bit. So that's pretty good. Um, this deck seems pretty decent. I'm not super comfortable playing aggro, but playing like black aggro, like black-red, I'm definitely more comfortable with than, like, red-white. Uh, I think that I just pilot black decks a little better, because they're a little bit more grindy, um, and I just kind of really enjoy that. And I probably play a little bit more dirtily, even when I'm playing aggro decks, so when I play white-red, you do not get paid off for that at all, um, and then it costs you. But I think here, you know, but we are very aggressive. That being said, I will be trying to actively, like, just push through as much damage as we can, like, you know, just, just remove everything if we have creatures on board, you know, just try and push through as much damage. We don't even necessarily need Rankle to win the game, potentially, we could just, because if we can push through enough damage and then, like, slap Tempting Witch down, we just need to have, like, two, two foods. <laughs> you know, Searing Barrage doing three damage to the creature we destroyed controller is also huge for our deck, like, this deck is really aggressive, so I'll try to play it as such, but it's nice to know that if we get stalled out a little bit, we don't automatically lose, like if we were playing a, uh, if we were playing a, what's it called, like a white-red deck. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how this deck does. Um, pretty happy with it, to be honest. To be honest. I mean, yeah, I'm pretty, pretty into it. We'll see how it goes. Um, also, I should, what do we got? We got white or green, white or black. Okay. This is the one I will re-roll. I can't believe you've done this to me, MTGA. I can't believe you've done this. 